Hey everyone, today we are going to go over the missing pieces in your business that are costing you money. And a lot of people don't know that these are things that they are executing on. So I'm gonna give you one really quick. This is gonna be great for you and we're just gonna go rapid fire. So talk about the problem and talk about potential solutions, all right? So if you or a business that has a decent amount of chargebacks, or cancellations, I can tell you right now, what you're missing is your delivery. It means your business is not delivering up to expectations and that's why you're getting them. So if this is you, let's look into how to fix it. One, set better expectations up front of what your clients are getting, how they're getting it and when they're getting it. And two, and this is the biggest one, decrease their time to value. All right. So when someone comes in to us to get financing, the easiest thing that we can do is one, over communicate and get them the funds faster. That increases our time to value and it will have your clients stick around longer. If you have a product or a service, make sure that they know what the product does, how it's going to help and how quickly they can get what they want. Okay. Stop selling the thing and sell what the product or service does for the client and make sure they get as fast as possible. The faster they get that, the less chargebacks or cancellations you're going to have. And that can be, if you just think, if you are a $2 million a year business okay, and you have 5% cancellations, guess what? That costs you $100,000 that year. If you can get that number down to, let's say, two, okay, you just found an, an extra $60,000 a year for your business. All right. So make sure your clients are getting exactly what they expect or even better, get more than they faster than they expect to get it. And that is the best way I can articulate that solution for you guys. Keith, what's one that comes to the top of your mind? I think where I would start, obviously a product that is a deliverable and provides value is like step one. Mm -hmm. To avoid your chargebacks. Being more like considerate to the process, I go way more foundational, which is like just having a client journey mapped out. Yeah. Even before you're really defined on your thing, you want to understand. This is for people, only people like coming into business, but fucking people that have been in business a long time should probably do this too. Yeah. I just did it. And revamped my complete client journey because I was sick of outside forces determining the type of money that my business could create and win. Right. So political environment, financial environment obviously has a lot to do with financial impact on your business, my business, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So having said that, you want to look at a couple of things. One thing is like how much communication you want to have with your client. Are you one of these people who want to sell a product and never have to worry about talking to that person again? Or do you want a client who sticks around and buys over and over and over again? You get to determine first thing, how involved are you going to be with each interaction? Because that has a lot to do with what your bandwidth is elsewhere and how quick you can grow anyway. Two is that leads to what you can actually provide in a service and understanding can you actually service what you're attempting to sell? So if you have... 50 hours a month that's dedicated to one client, then obviously you're going to be capped at a certain amount of clients, right? Well, you're going to be hiring like a mad person and ultimately growth at that speed is never going to work out. So I go back to the very beginning is like figuring out who I want to talk to, how long I want to be engaged with for that, and then understanding the rest of the process. How many touch points, how's, how long is the sales cycle, and how can I fine tune that? The rest of it, and works because you got a place for your client to go and track and follow and manage, and project manage, etc. So I think that's where I go first is understanding your process for a client interaction and then determining your bandwidth and, and making those decisions outside that. Yeah. So what Keith is saying is your client journey is the ideal path that your client goes on. Also includes his state, his problems, the problem that you're solving and how you solve with inside of your business. And having that mapped out along with your ideal avatar is huge. It's actually something, I'm glad you brought that up, Keith. It's something we're doing here as well. And 
we are also, I realize that our ideal avatar could have potentially changed and we don't know, right? So obviously I'm look, always looking for business owners that want to grow and expand and need our financing to do it. However, that doesn't, that's not an ideal avatar, right? So what I have to do is go back 12 months, see everyone that we've worked with successfully and then build an avatar around that will also increase our marketing efficiency and decrease the cost of our leads. All right. That's something that everyone should be doing every six to 12 months or at least checking to make sure the avatar is still the same. It's the 80-20 right. rule. And I say every six months that we do that internally with our company. And the reason is because every six months, I want to know where my marketing dollars are going. Are they going to the the 80% that provide me 20% revenue or are they going to the 20% that provide me 80% of the revenue? And we split test that every six months to make sure that we're consistently going to the top 20% of our product or our quote unquote client niche. Absolutely. I can spend less time there. I make more money. Yeah. That's yeah. the goal. Exactly. So we, yeah. yeah, we're doing that and everyone should do that, right? A yep. is main, what, what is your client journey? As your business grows, your client journey has to change. Think about this. If you added a new product or service, guess what? Your client journey is different. Okay. If you have a, yeah. And if you added a new product or service, guess what? Your avatar may be different or you may have changed it and you don't know. These are all things that you have to have your pulse on, um, your finger on the pulse. Next. Okay. And this one is a shameless, not, I don't want to say shameless plug, but something I see, uh, for entrepreneurs that are looking to grow and scale, a lot of you don't have your business credit built and you don't have your business and personal credit separate, right? And this is going to cost you dearly because as you're using your business, <laughs> as you're growing your business off your personal credit, when the time comes to get something that is only for the business, like a line of credit, an SBA loan, equipment financing, you're not in a position or a strong position to do it because you used your personal credit to build the business, okay? So- I don't care if you're in business 10 years and you're doing eight figures or you're just starting. Everyone here, I'm giving you one, one thing to check. Okay. Please go on dnb.com. It's dnb.com, three letters, and check your business credit. And if your business credit is 50 or under, you need to come to the foundation workshop. Look me up. It's on all my profiles. Get to that workshop. We will build your business credit for half the cost of what it normally takes and you'll get a one-on-one -on -one strategy session it's huge and it's something that you all need to do because i'm tired of seeing people apply for sba loans and equipment financing and not getting it because of stupid little mistakes that they have on their business credit all right because it costs you guys the opportunity cost from that point is usually two to three months so if you need a piece of equipment and you can't get it you need an sba loan and you can't get it it's going to take us two to three months to fix it so you might as well fix it now and get ahead of it and have a business that you're proud of that is more valuable and that can get whatever types of financing you need for growth or for emergencies. All right. So it's the foundation workshop. I do one a month. Make sure you get there. It's only 1500 bucks. It's a full day with me and my team and we'll build your business credit and we'll do that one-on-one -on -one strategy session. And if another thing, here, it's huge. Yeah, it is. Huge. <laughs> what else you got, Keith? Yeah, I think you hit on it, but I think liquidity is just, and that's not knowing your numbers, obviously, goes without saying. Most yeah. companies don't, period. But getting to know them allows you to do some pre planning. Coming into, uh, I don't know, let's call it what we see now high inflation, more expensive costs for equipment and cost of goods sold leads to a lot of companies shit in the bed. Right. So to, to the point of, even if you don't need money or you don't need financing or you don't need coverage, you should have it and you should get it. And the reason being is when, if you had it prior to today, obviously you wouldn't be paying 14% of this. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And the best right. time to apply for any type of financing is when you don't need it. So if you're into this and you don't have a line of credit and you don't, and you think you don't need one right this is when you should apply, is a message saying you should apply. I don't care if you use me or not, but go get one set up. Yeah. Example, right? 
my my home actually line of credit, I took it out when it was two and a half percent. Yeah. Right. Now those are floating. Right. So today it's the moon. But imagine if that was a fixed interest rate line of credit yeah. that I had. And today I'm saving 10% on every purchase that I make. Yep. Right. Now also, so let's say that you now I can buy shit at 2% that everyone else is having to pay 10% for. So step one of get it when you don't need it. Because today yeah. you'd save me a lot of money. The good thing is liquidity for the ability to snipe high level employees from other companies when they go out of business or whatever yeah. the fuck happens. Right. You need liquidity to be able to pounce on on ideas like that. So we always tell people like we want to help you get and make sure that you have gunpowder for when you need to pull the trigger. So I agree with that. Get it even if you don't need it. But also what will happen is you'll get it and then you will find a reason to need it. So you will force yourself to grow a business. Yeah. Or it'll be a jackass and buy a sports car. Either way, you'll have some fun. One way leads to more money. The other way leads to divorce. Take your pick. There you go. <laughs> so I think understanding client journey, understanding cash flow. Right. If you don't have those at some level of understanding, I won't tell you that you won't make it. I will tell you that you still can make it, but you will leave a lot of shit on the table that should be yours in the journey. So, and you will have, I don't know, minus 20 years of your life from stress. So you can focus on those things now and curve that pain. Or if you're already in business, that needs to be something that you consistently focus on or we'll start focusing on theory. Hold on. I will give you one more. And this is somewhat controversial. And I want you to know that I'm saying this as someone who is currently right now making this mistake in all my clients. And this is why this is just us delivering massive amounts of value to you guys. If you are the owner or founder of your company, you should not be on the ads. Okay. You should not be on your ads, all right? It will make it very hard for you to exit, okay? It might actually delay you selling the business a year or two, and it, you are basically giving yourself key man risk, okay, well, without actually knowing you're doing it, all right? What should you do for ads? I can tell you that ads, you can get a paid actor, you can use graphics, slides, you can use stories, or what I think is going to work best uh, is testimonials, okay? Every single person out here has something they're selling or pushing, uh, and everyone's competing for attention. What really matters is showing people your client journey through testimonials from your active clients, and there is no better advertisement you can run, all right? So what I would suggest is making sure that you're ethically getting reviews, testimonials, referrals, and utilizing them in your marketing. And the quicker you do that, the quicker your marketing can improve and get fixed. And it's actually something today that I am working on removing myself, right? So that's going to be probably a four to six week process. And then I'm trying to not have to do my own ads moving forward. And this is someone who has a full ads team in-house, guys. So I'm telling you, it's not easy. It takes time. And there's usually multiple steps involved to get to that point. But the sooner you can get to that point, the better it's going to be for you, your team, your company. Pro tip. You want to build your culture out and you want to get more buy-in from your employees, have them be the voice of your business. Have I them like on your ads them in the marketing spend budget conversation have them in involved there more of your project manager c-suite not your everyone but we've run that play a few times and the employees that we utilize always step up after that for some reason i bet because now they're on, now they're seeing them associated with the business and it means more to them yeah all right that's that's so. as simple as i could put it what go. else you got? Well, there's a lot to this. We could go on this one for forever. A good talk. Yeah, I think part one is good. I think part one is understand your product, understand your client journey, understand your numbers. Find your liquidity avatar. and plan. Number two is I think we get into the hustler to CEO conversation. 
implementing processes to eliminate man hours, creating automations to eliminate man hours. Yep. Some of those one to many tasks and creating an automation around it so you don't have to fuck with it anymore. Mm -hmm. And then hiring. So I think the evolution of like understanding product, my journey, the money, marketing, hiring processes. Let's wrap up. Let's do a, let's do a round two on this one. Like next show. I love it. Yeah. And here's one thing I will tell you guys. Recently, this was pointed out to me. The, the validity and truth behind it is really astounding. I've built a pretty decent business. And I thought I had all my SOPs covered. I thought my training regiment with my sales team was covered and everything was covered. And my business recently was ripped apart by people that I trust and I have built bigger, better things than I have built. And I find that my sales training is severely lacking. It's one, not intense enough and not frequently enough. And I haven't really reviewed any of my SOPs or procedures since year one, right? Have they changed and adapted? Yes. Are some of them recorded? Yes. Not all of them. All right. And so, Did you say it since year one? Year one or two. You got to remember my year one or two was two years ago, three years ago. This is not 15 years ago, right? This is, I'm talking from the rebrand, but it's still way too much time to like lapse and pass. And I'm essentially admitting to that and calling myself out on the bullshit. So that's something that I currently am working on. And I always want people, I'm not going to just be a highlight reel for people listening we want to show them, hey, we're human too. We fuck up and definitely one of my mistakes. So guys, we're bringing this to you because I don't want you guys making all the mistakes or some of the mistakes that Keith and I are making. We will catch you guys on the second. We appreciate you. See you.